Hello and welcome back to a new tutorial. I am Mr. 23 and today I'm going to teach you how to create realistic shadows and lights. I have used one of my previous pictures and then I import it in this composition and let me show you how to start from this background picture and finish with this wonderful composition. When you are creating a composition and you are bringing a subject which doesn't belong to your background, you have to be really careful about the light source. In our case, we can see the large light source, it's here where the sun is. So, in order to amplify the sun rays, we are going to quickly add some sun rays. Uh, so create a new layer, go to gradient tool and um, let usually, it's um, the gradient type, it's uh, solid and now we need noise and both restrict colors and add transparency and also roughness should be 100% hit OK and then drag a line from the bottom part di diagonally to the top part. Now we are going to make this layer black and white. In order to do that you can use a shortcut which is Ctrl or Command Shift and U and it does um, black and white uh, grayscale actually image. Now, uh, let's blend this one using the screen mode and convert it to a smart object. Now go to filter, blur and let's add some Gaussian blur around 22%. Hit OK and now let's add a inverted mask, hold Alt and click on the mask. As you can see the sun rays are gone and we need to bring them back by using the brush tool. So take the brush tool, use the white color and just paint where do you think the sun rays should be. In our case here where you can see uh, those white parts of the sky. Don't worry about the colors. We are going to change the colors really soon. And if you think uh, the sun rays are too strong you can use the black color and paint on top of them. All right, now let's add uh, some color. Choose solid color from the adjustment layers. Don't worry about the color now. Hold Alt or Option and clip this layer inside your sun rays. And now let's double click on the adjustment layer and choose a color from your background, which works best for your image. I think something like that. All right, hit OK. And now for this tutorial I have made several pictures to my Mandalorian and also I have uh, this character from uh, Assassin's Creed and um, I already selected one which I love most which is this one and uh, we are not going to use the selection now because I already selected be uh, before the tutorial so we can save time. Alright let's bring this uh, layer here in our image and um, double click on the mask to refine the edge a bit. So shift edge around minus 40%, contrast around uh, 50% and feather around 2%. All right, uh, hit OK. And now right click and convert the, this to a smart object. Ctrl or Command T to transform him and move it where do you think it matches the best position for your background? All right, now let's uh, adjust his colors to match our background. Hit uh, this curves adjustment layer, uh, double click, be sure that you have this selected, not the mask. So double click on the black um, sample tool from here, double click and choose the blackest color in our background. Okay, hit OK. Double click on the white sample and I think it's easier here because we have this sun. Hit OK, click Yes and then while you have this curves adjustment layer selected, hold Alt or Option and clip this layer inside our subject. And now we are going to use the blackest color in our subject and I think it's around here on under his helmet. Okay, now the whitest color I think also is on the helmet and now as you can see the colors match even better. I'm going to add another adjustment layer which is uh, 
photo filter and also I'm going to clip this one by holding alt or option inside my subject and now we are going to choose another color from the sky I think this one and increase the density to around let's say 75% as you can see now it looks much better so don't forget about the contact shadow is really really important because otherwise the subject looks like it's floating so this is our subject uh, underneath our subject we are going to create a layer let's call this one contact shadow and now set the blending mode to multiply take again the brush tool and the size should be really small and let's sample by holding alt or option a color from our background as you can see here it's a, a bit darker so we need that dark color now zoom in so you can see what you're doing and um, I'm going to teach you a new trick for the contact shadows so take the brush tool right click on the screen and you drag from the top point until you make uh, an oval from our round shape let's decrease the flow to 4% and we need to match the angle just drag this slider to the top so you can match the angle of the hits boots now the main shadow it's of course another one which is uh, the shadow that is behind our subject in order to do that just hold control or command as you can see here on the thumbnail it already has a hand with a marquee tool on top of it so click on this layer and create a new layer and just fill it with the paint bucket tool fill it with any color you wish you, we can always change the color of the shadows so we have our shadow this is it and now just uh, press ctrl or command t and let's right click on this uh, shadow and clip it vertically drag it all the way down something like that and now we need to add some perspective to our shadow because as you can see we have the sun to the top uh, right part so hold ctrl or command and drag this corner to the left and also this one until you decide that it's the best perspective to your image okay let's zoom in as you can see um, for the perspective looks great but here it doesn't intersect with our subject let's move it a bit and um, even if I move it this right side of the shadow uh, is not that long so in order to do that convert our uh, shadow to a smart object go to edit and choose puppet warp from here how the puppet warp works uh, we are sampling two points on this part of the shadow so that means if I sample the third one here on top and I drag it uh, everything stays in place so this is what I need we are going to do this let's zoom in more we are going to do this here so I'm interested in this part to stay in the same place and I'm dragging this one all the way under hit boots so hit apply great let's blend this shadow to multiply so one important thing about shadows is that they are really sharpen near the subject and they are blurry as the shadow goes far from the subject so we need to do that also so go to filter blur gallery and choose field blur uh, normally when you use field blur it has this adjustment in, uh, in the center of the image and now let's bring this blur to zero so what we want to do is set zero 
blur where we want the shadow to be sharpened and keep it sharpened. I want the shadow to be sharpened to this size. And now we can blur it more as the shadow is far from our subject. All right. Great, hit OK. Let's add a mask to our shadow. Choose again the brush tool. And now let's bring this back to our round shape and choose a really bigger size. Normally the shadow uh, is darker as it's close to our subject and uh, it's, it's fading uh, when the shadow is far from the subject. So we are going to do the same thing. We are going to fade our shadow uh, on the farthest part of our subject, something like that. And I think uh, we need to add some adjustment layers. Let's choose hue and saturation, hold alt or option and clip it inside your shadow and let's decrease the um, saturation. And let's decrease the opacity of our shadow to something like 65%. Great, we have a really nice shadow and now let's add some uh, lights to our subject. Let me teach you some nice tricks for the lights adjustments. Double click on the layer and choose inner shadow. Uh, zoom in. Now we need everything to be set to zero so you can see better and the blending mode should be set to screen. And we are going to choose a color from the sun colors from here. All right, and let's de increase the distance. As you can see, it adds uh, a small light to the side where the light is coming from. Uh, okay, so 404 you can use for this Mandalorian. Hit okay. And now I don't want this one to be all over the uh, side of the Mandalorian so I'm going to right click on our inner shadow and I'm going to create this inner shadow in a new layer. We have this new layer created here and I'm going to hold alt and add an inverted mask. Now we are, I'm going to bring back the parts that I want by using the brush tool and I'm going to paint where I want that light to be because I didn't want that light to be everywhere. Okay think here works great. Here on the side. Okay. And also on the gun. On the helmet. And that's it. We are going to add now another one, another light. This time it will be bigger. So uh, just increase the size more and let's um, choose another color which is something like an orange okay hit okay and now the same thing right click and create this layer and also add an inverted mask a mask which is filled with black we are doing the same thing increase the brush size we are going to paint where we want that light to be. The lights are not enough. We need also some shadows. So create a new levels adjustment layer. And now hold Alt and clip it inside our subject. And uh, let's decrease the uh, lights. Also from here. I think something like that. Now we are going to invert this mask by holding Ctrl or Command and I. And as we did with the other adjustments, we are going to bring back the colors where we need them. So zoom in and as you can see, we can use the white color now to darken parts of our image.
So this is before, this is after. I think it looks really nice now. The next thing that I'm going to do is as add some glowing. So double click and choose outer glow and choose a color from the background, which whatever you think it works best. So I think this one hit OK. We are going to do the same thing. Right click and create layer and add a mask, inverted mask by holding Alt or Option and then paint where you think the sh outer glow should be. I think here on the helmet, also on the hands. Yeah, something like that. And on the gun, let's see. It not, it's not really that big, but it makes our image even better. Okay, now we created some lights. Let's add some more lights to the sky. Go on top of all the layers and now go to layer and choose new and from here select color dodge from the blending mode and fill it with black. Choose OK and um, let's paint with a 3% flow and uh, choose our brush size should the size should be bigger and just paint all right let's make it even bigger just paint on top of everything with this orange color okay great this is with this orange this is without uh, now let's create again a new layer this time i'm going to choose screen fill it also with black and uh, let's choose um, even orange color and paint on top of everything. Now we are going to add some dust because he's in the desert and uh, I like um, to make this one even more realistic. Now we are going to sample a color from our um, landscape and we are going to um, paint with that color where the sky intersects the desert. Now we are going to do the same thing, go on top of all the layers, create a new layer and repeat the process but this time we are going to place this dust on top of him and let's in increase the flow and uh, add some uh, dust on top of him. Let's go here on uh, the bottom and uh, we can add more if you want or if you think it's too much just add a mask and paint with the same brush this time using black and we will decrease the fog, the dust. Now that we created um, everything, let's add some more adjustments to finish this composition. We are going to use the camera row from Photoshop and in order to do that, let's make a screenshot from all our layers and um, it's a shortcut for that. Hold Ctrl or Command Alt Shift and I and it does a copy of all the layers in one layer. Now right click and convert this one to smart object. Go to filter, choose camera row filter. And now let's uh, play around with the camera row filter. Let's decrease the temperature, increase the tint also. Let's decrease exposure. Contrast should, should be around 8%. Let's decrease the shadows, increase the whites a bit. And now let's add some texture and also some clarity. Dehaze this a bit, 12% minus, and uh, at the end you can add some vibrance. All right, now let's add some um, vignette to our image, something like that. Hit OK. So this is the result of our shadows and light tutorial. We um, started from this picture. As you can see, it's a very big difference and we managed to match our subject to the background and also to make realistic shadows and lights. So this was the tutorial from today. I hope you like it. If you do, please subscribe to my channel. See you next time.